will live in interesting times. Today's stories. Angola says 380,000 illegal migrants exit in weeks. With the border open, Ethiopia and Eritrea are back in business. Journalist group seeks punishment for Khashoggi's death. President Trump threatens to send the military against immigrant onslaught. President Trump praises congressman who assaulted reporter. Plus, Pinto Manhattan Manila 2 opens the door again to Filipino art. Hello everyone, I am Rose Papa Angeles bringing you stories from around the globe and this is Eagle News, Washington, D.C. A minister said Saturday about 380,000 illegal migrants, mostly from the neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo, have left Angola in less than a month during a massive operation targeting diamond smuggling. On a visit to Danjo in northern Angola on the border with DR Congo, Pedro Sebastião dismissed allegations that the migrants had been violently expelled and often beaten by police. Sebastião, a state minister and the head of presidential security who is in charge of the operation, told traveling reporters that diamonds worth more than one million had been seized. He said that the migrants had all left voluntarily and 231 premises for illegal diamond trading had been closed and 59 weapons seized. Falarmos daquilo que nós, enquanto angolanos, como Estado soberano, estamos a fazer no nosso território em prol da nossa própria segurança, uma vez que aquilo que vamos assistindo aqui já coloca, já tem laivos de beliscos a nossa segurança nacional. Basta dizer que até o momento já abandonaram o nosso país voluntariamente, voluntariamente, eu repito, nada mais nada menos que cerca de 380 mil cidadãos estrangeiros. Aqui neste território parecia terra de ninguém, em que todo o mundo estava metido no garimpo. Todo o mundo explorava ilicitamente os diamantes, sem qualquer contrapartida para o horário público. Daí que o governo achou por bem realizar esta operação, que vai durar o tempo necessário para que possamos estabilizar aqui a região e o país. Speaking at the Chitaro border post, he said the crackdown across northern and western Angola was legitimate and was to ensure that the country's diamond reserves were correctly exploited. After pouring across the border in recent weeks, many Congolese have described being brutally thrown out of Angola after sometimes leaving there for more than 10 years. Bon, je constate que en tout cas ils sont euh, manipulés euh, les, les, les gens comme des bêtes pela essa a retirada do estrangeiro porque vieram invadir a nossa riqueza e nós não gostamos do comportamento que eles nos mostraram aqui a retirada dele os angolanos gostamos muito Zalambeza is an Ethiopian city on the border with Eritrea destroyed during the 1998 to 2000 war between the two countries the city ceased 20 years after a renewal thanks to the opening of the border for 20 years, this border crossing was deserted. Today, it's teeming with buses and trucks queuing to cross. In July, Eritrea and Ethiopia signed a historic peace agreement after 20 years of conflict. Since the border opened, the number of Eritreans fleeing the country's repressive regime has tripled. Nebat Zedea left with her three daughters. <laughs> Eritrea is one of the weakest economies in Africa and among its worst records on human rights. The majority of the population is not allowed to leave the country and cannot escape compulsory and indefinite military service. The border town of Zalambeza is attracting those who dream of leaving but also visitors who want to see more of it. 
Trucks, people and goods are traveling in both directions. To the delight of Eritreans, Ethiopian traders come by bus to bring everything they can sell to the market in Santa Fe, an Eritrean town 23 kilometers north of the border. Ethiopian traders are embracing the opportunities but remain skeptical of trade terms. The value of the Eritrean currency, the NAFCA, is much higher than the Ethiopian burr, reminiscent of trade issues that ignited the 1998 war. An Istanbul-based journalist group on Saturday demanded punishment for those who ordered the killing of Jamal Khashoggi at the Saudi Arabian consulate. But this is not over. It is just starting. Today we are calling the whole world on the duty. We want justice for Jamal. We want Jamal's murders to be punished. However, we want punishment not only for the 18 men, but also for the authority that gave the orders. There's only one thing that matters right now. Give Jamal us back. Give him back so that we can raise his funeral. Let the whole world watch Jamal's Kashukji's farewell, who is killed in a dark room with horrific details. Coming up, President Trump threatens to send the military against immigrant onslaught. President Trump praises congressman who assaulted reporter. Welcome back. You're watching Eagle News, Washington, D.C. President Donald Trump threatened Thursday to send the military to close the U.S.-Mexican border against an onslaught of migrants stepping up his anti-immigrant rhetoric ahead of congressional elections. As several thousand Hondurans made their way through Central America toward the U.S. border, Trump blamed Democrats for an assault on our country by Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador with a caravan, quote, including many criminals. As you know, I'm willing to send the military to defend our southern border if necessary. All caused because of the illegal immigration onslaught brought by the Democrats because they refuse to acknowledge or to change the laws. They like it. They also figure everybody coming in is going to vote Democrat, you know. Trump has made his call for a wall on the southern border, a signature issue of his two-year presidency. But Thursday's tweet storm was especially fierce. Trump suggested he was even prepared to put at risk the recently renegotiated North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, between Mexico and the United States and Canada, redubbed as USMCA. He said, quote, the assault on our country at our southern border, including the criminal elements and drugs pouring in, is far more important to me as president than trade or the USMCA. White House spokeswoman Sarah Sanders, meanwhile, said, quote, we are passionate about solving the issue of illegal immigration and that our administration is doing a great job on the border. The Mexican stop is important for future relations because it comes just ahead of the inauguration in December of President-elect Andres Manuel López Obrador. Marcelo Ebrard, Mexico's foreign minister designate, downplayed Trump's comments as aimed at his domestic political base. Ebrard told local radio station Radio Centro the position of President Trump is the one he has always raised. He added it was predictable and also the election process is very close, so he is making a political calculation. U.S. President Donald Trump on Thursday praised a U.S. congressman who assaulted a reporter, making light of the attack. 
Greg Jeanfort was sentenced to six months of deferred jail time, 40 hours of community service, 20 hours of anger management sessions, and $385 in fines and court fees for the misdemeanor assault that propelled him and his congressional race into the national spotlight last year. At the rally, Trump urged people to vote for Gian Fort, describing him as an incredible Montana leader and one of the most respected people in Congress. And by the way, never wrestle him. You understand that? Never. Any guy that can do a body slam, he's my kind. He's my guy. I shouldn't say this because there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Trump said he originally thought the assault, which took place on the eve of his election, might hurt Gian Ford's chances. The president said he knows Montana pretty well and thinks it might help him, and it did. The Guardian U.S. editor John Mulholland took aim at Trump's remarks. Referring to the amendment to the U.S. Constitution that guarantees freedom of the press, he said, to celebrate an attack on a journalist who was simply doing his job is an attack on the First Amendment by someone who has taken an oath to defend it. Mulholland said in the aftermath of the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, it runs the risk of inviting other assaults on journalists both here and across the world where they often face far greater threats. Riyadh is suspected of murdering Khashoggi, a Washington Post contributor and U.S. permanent resident whose writings have been critical of powerful Saudi crown prince Mohammed bin Salman. Trump, who frequently criticizes what he terms the fake news media and has repeatedly described news organization as the enemy of the people, has been accused of setting a tone that condones abuses against journalists in other countries. When we come back... Pinto Manhattan Manila 2 opens the door again to Filipino art. Eagle News Washington, D.C. will return shortly. This is Eagle News, Washington, D.C. I am Rose Papa Angeles. New York City once again opens its doors to Filipino artists in a pop-up exhibition in Tribeca, benefiting the Asian Cultural Council and the Pinto Art Museum. Eagle News correspondent Joan Blanco Soriano with more. Among the many restaurants, galleries, and boutiques here in Tribeca is an art exhibit dedicated to contemporary Filipino artists. Pinto Manila 2 is the third pop-up exhibition of Pinto International and features the work of more than 30 Philippine artists. It launched last year in New York, followed by an exhibition in Tokyo. This exhibit serves as a means to cultivate cultural diplomacy through art. Door, Pinto is actually a door that opens new possibilities of uh, many, many possibilities, in fact. And it started the whole philosophy from the museum that was opening the door of uh, Dr. Kwanang's collection to the public. He offered me the option, after we became good friends, to export Pinto together, embark on this new yeah. uh, adventure, and export and open the door to Filipino art, not only for his specific collection, but open the door of Filipino art to the rest of the world. Uh, five years ago, when I was here in uh, Manhattan, there was an uh, Asian Art Week. And uh, I found out that there were no Filipinos in that particular uh, activity here in New York. So I said, well, you know, I think uh, we have a lot of very talented artists from the Philippines, which are very diverse in their in their approach to art. So I said, well, this was a very uh, good incentive for us to, for Pinto, to bring the artists to New York. We started this new project that is called Pinto International, and it's, uh, it's uh, formed by three parts. Yeah. The first is the international pop-ups, the second yeah. is a permanent uh, exhibition space here in New York. That is a gallery that anybody can come and visit upon um, 
upon uh, appointment. And so we do shows, three or four shows every year there with some of our selected artists. Uh, and the third uh, is our presence online, so our website pintoart.com mm -hmm. and our Instagram account, which is the most active way we communicate to our followings in French, yeah. which is pinto.art. Uh, the other thing is I want to invite uh, the listeners, uh, the watchers of this show, to, if they come to uh, Metro Manila, they can come over and visit Pinto Art Museum in Antipolo. You know? It's a very popular uh, destination for a lot of people, especially Balikbayans and foreigners. <laughs> and uh, just to let you know, it's, uh, it was voted as the num number 23 most Instagram museum in the whole world. Yeah. Pinto Art Museum okay. is a place to go. <laughs> well, thank you. Exhibits such as this showcase the influence of Filipino culture and art. The exhibit will travel to Milan next May. Reporting from Tribeca in New York City, this is Joanne Blanco Soriano, 1 with 25. Extraordinary and such lovely works of art. Thanks, Joanne. That is today's Eagle News, Washington, D.C. Join us again next week for stories from our viewers across the nation and around the globe. Visit our websites at eaglenews.ph and eaglenewslive.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash eaglenewsph. Thank you for watching. I am Rose Papa Angelis and I am one with 25.